So I'm Tom Byrne. I'm an electrical engineer with Electric Imp, and uh, I build and help other people build internet-connected devices. Uh, that's a pretty broad statement. So let's, uh, let's talk for just a second about you. Who here has built an internet-connected device before? Not like a phone, but like a, an internet of things, internet-connected device. Show of hands. None? OK, we've got one over here. What did you build it with? Uh, Raspberry, Pi. Raspberry Pi. Has anybody used, uh, say, Arduino before? Quick show of hands. OK, we've got an Arduino or two back here. It's got some Raspberry Pi, some, Raspberry, or some uh, Arduino people. Uh, internet, uh, Electric Imp is an Internet of Things platform. So you can think of this as being sort of like uh, an Amazon Web Services for the Internet of Things. And the goal is just to make it really easy for you as a person who wants to build 1 to 10 million internet-connected objects to focus on that object, its behavior, and what makes it good, rather than focusing on connecting it to the internet, keeping it connected, and keeping it secure. Whew, that's quite a shock. Um, so Electric Imp is designed to be a kind of a platform of choice for people that are making many things. And when I say many, I mean 100,000, a million, 10 million of something. Um, but a lot of the design optimizations that have gone into building a platform like that make it an awesome prototyping tool and an awesome tinkerer's tool as well. Um, it is and always will be free for uh, hobbyists and tinkerers and people prototyping. And uh, we've got uh, kits with us today, and we'll come back to that in a second. Um, but if you're building an internet-connected device, uh, the way you do it with Electric Imp is to build your device around one of Electric Imp's microcontrollers. So we have some of those with us today. Here's one. It looks like an SD card, but it's not. This is an ARM microcontroller and a Wi-Fi SoC and an antenna and some memory and some RF front end, all packed up into a little package that looks like an SD card plugged into a board with some LEDs on it. And I'll show you the code that's running on this at the end. So every device uh, runs the IMP embedded operating system that handles keeping a secure connection to the IMP cloud. And in the IMP cloud, uh, there's a, so on top of the IMP OS, there's a VM where your application code runs. Um, and that's great because it means that you can push bad code to the device and the device isn't bricked. You can push new code to it later and recover the device, which is great if you have it, as some of our customers do, in a coal mine or uh, up a tree or in a beehive. These are all real things that have actually happened. Um, every device also has a partner agent that runs in our cloud. Uh, it's another VM that uses the same APIs as the device, except that it has some APIs to make and receive arbitrary HTTP requests. So what you wind up with is one or 10 million devices um, with an HTTP interface that you, des you design and implement so that you can uh, integrate it with other cloud software as if your hardware was itself a cloud service. Uh, anybody who's followed IoT no news a little bit or uh, tinkered with this or, or built many of something knows that uh, IoT is going through some growing pains as far as security goes. Uh, you might have heard stories about uh, people's refrigerators sending spam or malware. You might have heard about how uh, the people that stole all those credit card numbers from Target did so by gaining access to one of their store networks through an internet-connected thermostat on the wall. Um, so security is obviously something you want to pay attention to from the get-go if you're, if you're going to build a lot of these and stake your professional reputation on their quality. Uh, so Electric Imp kind of takes care of a lot of the common problems there, including everything from secure boot to uh, industry, industry standard encryption, uh, talking from the device to the agent. Um, and when Heartbleed comes out, you don't have to panic. Electric Imp patches it for everybody and pushes a new OS build securely. Uh, it's a secure channel for you to change the firmware running on the devices if uh, there's a bug that could be used to exploit your application uh, and so forth. So that's, that's why it's great. Um, but you're all developers like I am, or you've, you've expressed some interest in doing something like that. Uh, so here's the end of the pitch and the start of actually doing some fun stuff. Um, over in the Hacker Lounge today, we have, I think, about 40 or 50 dev kits that are just like the one that I have here with me, except these all include a little sensor board that plugs into your breakout board. And this allows you to log the temperature, the humidity, the air pressure, and the ambient light level. And uh, we've built some simple tutorials for you to build a weather station, get some graphs going, and connect this to New Relic Insights so that you can actually uh, take a look at your data in that context using a new relic query. So here are all the people that have successfully connected today. They all won a uh, flying remote controlled shark, as you can as well. Um, and this takes about 20 to 30 minutes, even if you've never developed with Electric Imp before. If you've never developed uh, with an embedded platform before, you should still come check it out because you'll definitely be able to get it done. Um, and just to prove that, 
here is something that I've built. Uh, so this is the Electric Imp IDE. It's a web-based tool for developing your Electric Imp application. This is great because there's no tool chain. I don't have to install anything. And any place I have an internet connection, I can work with any of my devices that are connected. Um, on the left-hand side here, you see the code that's running on the agent for this device. Um, so it's actually got its own URL, and it's interacting with the Twitter library that we've written. And the device code is actually interacting with some LEDs. So that is this device right here. And this is 24 lines of code that implement a real-life Twitter notification light. So this is set up so that uh, every time uh, someone tweets uh, anything with the hashtag selfie, uh, we're going to change the color on this. <laughs> and that's why it's so hyperactive. But we could change this to point at FutureStack15 or ElectricAmp or whatever you'd like, point it at your own username. Um, and since I've got five minutes, let's just take a look at these 24 lines of code. We can go through the whole application. On the device side, here's what makes it go. So we've got our uh, library for the WS2812. That's these LEDs. They're what, um, if you're a SparkFun or Adafruit person, you might have seen these called NeoPixels before. These are really cool. They've got a little one-wire serial interface. So we clock in some bits, and those set the color of each of the R, G, and B LEDs on each of the pixels. So this, this library abstracts that. Um, this is some administrata that you don't have to worry about. We bring up a SPI interface to send our signal, pass that SPI interface to the uh, WS2812 class to create a pixel object. Um, this library is documented on the uh, Electric Imp Developer Center, so you can see the methods that are available for you to use. And then every time the agent sends us a tweet event, we call this callback function. So we create a new random color um, by creating three values between 0 and 10. I can change the brightness. It's blindingly bright at the max, 255. So we write that new random color into each of the five pixels and write the frame out. That's the works. Um, OK, so the complexity must all be on the agent side, right? Well, not so much. This is all keys. And if you take a really quick photograph, you can go ahead and get me banned from Twitter. Uh, so we pull in the Twitter class that abstracts uh, all of the Twitter interactions we have. This class has handles for you to do things like send tweets, search tweets, stream search. Um, this is just what we call the Firehose API. So we're just starting a search, and then every time uh, an event occurs, it sends us back a result. We start the search over again. Got my keys, create my Twitter object, start a stream for selfie. Let's, let's be good uh, speakers here. That's better. So we'll start our stream for future stack 15. Every time uh, that tweet comes in, it's got all the data associated with that tweet. We've got the username. Um, we've got the text of the tweet, their location, any photos that are attached. We're going to throw that all away because all we're going to do is change the color of the light. But what we do is send that event, the tweet event, so that matches here, to the device. And that's the whole application. So if, uh, if you think you can handle that, you've got some cool ideas you want to try, we've got the hardware for you. Um, just come by the Hacker Lounge when you're done here. And thanks very much. <laughs>